Okay, so here's example two with the intermediate value theorem. Uh, f of x equals x cubed minus e to the x. And we want to know, does f of x have any zeros between x equals two and x equals four? So um, same kind of thing as before. First we see is f of x continuous, and uh, x cubed is continuous everywhere, e to the x is continuous everywhere, so uh, x cubed minus e to the x is also continuous everywhere. Uh, that's great, we don't have to worry about that. So now we just see, okay, does f of, uh, do f of 2 and f of 4 have opposite signs? So we just see, okay, f of 2 is uh, 2 cubed minus e squared. So it's 2 cubed minus e squared, which is um, 8 minus e to the second power. Okay, which is about equal to uh, 0 0.611, which is positive. All right, now we look at f of 4. Okay, f of 4 equals uh, 4 cubed, okay, because it's uh, x cubed minus e to the x, so f of 4 is 4 cubed minus e to the 4. Um, and that's going to be 64 minus e to the 4th power, which when we toss into a calculator is about equal to... Uh, 9.402, which is also positive. So that's no good, because remember, the intermediate value theorem says if the function is continuous and if uh, the value of the function at the points, uh, if the values have opposite signs, then yeah, there are some zeros. Uh, there's at least one. But here, um, f of 2 is positive and f of 4 is positive, so we can't conclude anything. Remember our discussion from a couple videos ago, um, we can't say anything, okay? So um, does f of x have any zeros between x equals 2 and x equals 4? Um, I don't know. Maybe. Okay, I don't know, maybe. Uh, it might have zeros, it might not. Um, in this particular case, it doesn't. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick. But again, I just want to point out that uh, for the intermediate value theorem, your conclusion is either going to be yes, there are zeros, there's at least one zero between these values, or I don't know, maybe. There might be zeros, there might not be, okay? So let's just take a look at a graph real quick. Um, so we'll zoom in here. Okay, uh, we'll go to the equation editor. So our function is x cubed minus uh, e to the x. Oops. All right, so now let's go ahead and graph that. So each take mark represents one unit. So we see that uh, here, um, here's two, so it's kind of barely positive at x equals two, and then here's three, here's four. Um, it crosses the x-axis again uh, after four. So here, um, f of two and f of four are both positive, and it doesn't cross the, the function doesn't cross the x-axis anywhere between them. It might be kind of hard to see there, so um, just for fun, let's go ahead and take a closer look. So we'll say x min is, uh, I don't know, negative 1. And x max will be 5. Uh, x scale is 1. y min will be uh, negative 5. And y max will be uh, 11. Okay, and y scale will just be 1. So we'll go back to the graph. And now here's our function. Okay, so again, each take mark on the x-axis uh, and the y-axis represent one unit. So here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four, here's five. So f of two is barely positive, uh, as we can see here. Okay, oh, that's bad, that's bad. Never mind that. f of two is barely positive, and f of four is uh, positive all the way up here. And uh, in between them, uh, the, the function doesn't cross the x-axis anywhere. So in this case, no, there aren't any zeros, but just want to point out again that the intermediate value theorem only tells us nothing, actually, in this case, because f of 2 and f of 4 are both positive. The intermediate value theorem gives us no conclusion. So we have to try something else, like uh, graphing it or some other technique. But anyway, uh, that's example 2.